Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion and, of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me is Evgeny. Hi, I have a bottle cap from... <laughs> oh, that's transparent. <laughs> and this? Green screen. Green screen. <laughs> <laughs> so is it a green bottle cap or? No, no. It just has like, uh, like, like jugs. And it and we can't are, see has mm. jugs. You can see the outline. Interesting. Yeah, you can see. Yeah. They are outline uh, of jugs. Interesting. Yes. They are outlines of jugs. Uh, but that is from uh, a soda called Haridos, which is delicious. That's 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 great, buddy. Uh, also joining us Did is I say I'm urgent. I'm urgent. Okay, great. great. <clears throat> also joining us is Shannon. Hi, I'm Gray. I don't have any bottle caps for you. That's. I think that's for the best, actually. <laughs> I don't know what I would do with them. Yeah, I mean, throw them in the trash. Usually, I would say. I am. I am the soda inquisitor. <laughs> great. <laughs> It is kind of like being friends with a five-year-old sometimes. <laughs> it, it's it's really funny. For like the first two Wob episodes, our first one was just totally off the rocker. And then Joff came on and we're like, okay, well, we got to get, we got to get stuff done. <laughs> and this one is just like, whoo, we're Zini at the beginning. I aspire to maintain my youthful energy and be hip with the five-year-old. And I don't even know what happened in episode three because I haven't, I wasn't there. I, I, and I haven't edited it yet by the time of recording. So anyway, also we have Joshua. How's it going? Hi, uh, I'm Joshua. And um, the, the, in the, on Discord, like a few weeks ago, somebody rated all of us like chaos levels and different things, and I was like voted number one straight man. So I'll try to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's I, that that's 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 fitting. Also joining us, we have Ian. Hello, I'm Aeonine on the places, and I have a cool rock. I'm not telling you guys what it is. You have to figure that out. It's a cool rock. Topaz. <laughs> oh, yes. that would be uh, topaz. It's. Well, it's it was yellow, so it can be rosite. So it's probably like dandelionite. Look, look. It's more orange. It was called amberite originally. Okay, and it, that's and, okay. Yeah, and it was pink, and so you know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is orangeite. Orangeite. I love it. I like that. Great name. Named for its similarity to orange and not orange. Yeah, cool. So <laughs> we're finally done with Dragon Steel. Wobs, that's great. We're doing more. There's there may be three, two or three episodes, may, maybe three, and then maybe we'll have more if there's a Sunlit Man spoiler stream eventually. Did did Brandon really say Sunlit Man stream in January? I don't. Uh, it it could have been January or February, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that because mm. because the one that we had in November, he was like, "Oh, let's 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 make this one Yumi theme. Like half of it is gonna be Yumi, half of it is gonna be General Cosmere, but no Sunlit Man. And then we're gonna have another stream, which is half Sunlit Man, half everything. I assume. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that's June. <laughs> I, I don't know if he anticipated how busy he would be with Storm I-5 revisions. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not uh, terribly surprising. He must have. Stormlight 5 is always like that. I mean, Stormlight is always like that. Yeah, but Brandon also just says stuff like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> he does just say stuff. That's why we're here, is that he says stuff. <laughs> he says yeah. stuff. That's, that's, that's the title of the episode. He just says Brandon, stuff. Brandon, I say stuff, Sanderson. Yes, 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 yes. So we're finally on to the December spoiler stream, which was the aforementioned half Yumi, half everything else uh, stream. And then uh, eventually we'll get to our remaining like things from our Brandon interview. <laughs> like we'll, we'll get there eventually. Oh so, God, we never finished those. No, we never, we never finished those. And I, I actually didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I intentionally like 
went to the dragon steel spoiler q a for the first episode in the sequence and then wow. he's going to chicago which evgeny will be there so you'll 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 maybe get some c2e2 e2, baby yeah so wow. uh, there was a period of like several years in which I would uh, like submit, you know, contact form or emails or whatever it is to the C2E2 organization and go, hey, can you invite this guy called Brendan Sanderson to be your guest? I stopped doing that. And apparently that was the, the key to, to success. <laughs> yeah, stop <Sorry>. trying. <laughs> I mean, that's that's my key to success, really. Procrastinate and be rewarded for it. It is upsetting how often it actually happens. And that's how you know there's no justice in this universe. I think they realized that the stalker was like no longer the, like... <laughs> the danger had passed. <laughs> this guy keeps sending an email on the contact form every single day wanting just to get him there. I don't know if that's the best idea here. Or maybe we should ban him from the con. <laughs> you can't oh, stop me. You, you heard it here first, guys. Cancel of Getty. Easy. What? No, I said you can't stop me, not cancel me. Oh, <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, uh, let's cancel them. Uh, and speaking of that, uh, our first question is from Evgeny. Why don't you? Why don't you? Uh, the first question comes from me, as has been established. I ask Brandon to tell us a little bit about Valor. What's her vessel like? Any fun anecdotes? Hoyt once bought Tanovas a drink. Are there? any like fun stories with valor's vessel just anything brandon please valor is my heart and my babe and also i'm a paladin and she's probably a paladin and i love her very much please brandon and okay you, uh, i can have bottomy shroom you can have valor that's acceptable to me that's 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 fine i and and brandon says uh let's put this one off <laughs> for a little longer <laughs> Let's raffle Valor. How about this? I'll give you one thing. Valor is name dropped in Stormlight 5. Cool. And this was not what I was looking for, but it was also not nothing. And I will I will take my wins where I can take them. Watch it just be an epigraph again. Just be like, hey, Valor's the thing. There you Valor go. is Valor. Hey, hey, Hoyt. Valor still wants to talk to you. Can you like? <laughs> is that is what 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 did what did say that say about Valor? It has been it has been too long in her opinion since you two had like talked or whatever. Mm. Mm. And 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 says that thought Valor was reasonable, right? Is that the other thing, or am I misremembering that with another shard that he was talking about? I think so, yeah. Yeah, Sazen thought. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Half of the fun of the spoiler stream was just uh, 17 sharders and Argent and me getting dunked on, which was very funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was tempted to, like, edit it and, like, make that happen, but, but the, ch the chat disappeared when they... They they had an issue and so they, uh, they yeah. re-uploaded it and Aww. so you can't see the chat anymore. So it's not it's not as fun. But don't worry, I remember the thing that I said that Brandon commented on. We're gonna get to that. <laughs> We're gonna get there. But yeah, I think Valor is the best. Good. <laughs> you, you want you want some Valor Knights? I I want I want the Knights Valorious Va Valors. The Knights Valors. Valors. <laughs> nice. I I remembered language. Nice. Uh, and how, how will those be different than the Knights Radiant? Uh, they will have different powers. We'll, we'll get that surge of electromagnetism. They'll have yeah, emotional yeah, yeah. allomancy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, the, sure. the powers that the, the yeah, Rashard yeah. ones don't have. They they will have access to microkinesis, which they'll have other... the paladin powers in my yes. Yes. yes yes yes. I don't know what those are gonna look like, but there will be smiting involved. I want paladins. I want. I'm just. I'm. I'm here with you. I love that Valor's a lady. Hey, that's something. Valor's a lady. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll get more Valor screen time than uh, female Herald screen time. Yikes, forever. <laughs> hey, um, for all we know, one of the female Heralds is the vessel for Valor, and there's, there's no ways for us to know that. 
Oh, sure. It's it's literally oh, possible. No, no, here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Uh, <laughs> the vessel of valor is Tanavast's daughter, and Kaladin is going to take her place and become the paladin. Kaladin, paladin, the Kaladin <laughs> guard, and that's why he is the son of Tanavast. <laughs> okay. Well, well, Joff, we're, we're starting oh. this one out strong. Good job, buddy. Uh, nice. Keeping it right on track. We're so on Straight track. man. <laughs> Next one. We're going to get through so many wops today. Next one. So many Shannon. Wops. All right. Uh, this one doesn't seem to have uh, an associated question. It's just Brandon has a paragraph here. Oh, because he was responding to chat. So, like, there's a lot of things where Brandon just... This, this was one where he could literally see chat and so he got very distracted oh that one yeah Yeah, is that one which i I kind of enjoyed the brandon distractions but i know some people didn't love sure sure yes all right arcanum unbounded leather bound we don't have specific plans for when that one fits in the schedule yet i think we're probably going to do one the big question is when do we do Steelheart or Skyward Leather Bounds? Do we do them? Where does Arcanum Unbounded fit in there? The only ones that are really sure are bands, and then we're going to do Lost Metal after that, even though it's not 10-year anniversary. We just want people to be able to complete their sets. And then, of course, the Stormlight books, we will continue to do that at about the rate. Those take a lot more work. Those will be three to four years apart, like we've been doing. Rip Nalthus essay, everyone. <sighs> We were supposed to get the now this essay with our candle and battle leather bound, Brandon. Ah! We're never getting it. Don't worry, we'll um, get it at the same time as we get the medallion chart. <laughs> well, we'll do an episode for each of those. 2030, here we come. You guys, the medallion chart. Actually, we're never getting actually that. They're, gonna, they're gonna get bundled with the uh with the uh first edition of the uh white sand uh hardcover. <laughs> Rewrite, re-release. That's what it's called, actually. Sure. <laughs> White yeah, Sand sure. Rewrite, re-release. That's its official name. White Sand, the definitive edition. Rewrite, release. Premium, yeah. the the premium, the the deluxe premium edition. Yes, definitive. Mm. Now you have to pre-order that for the for the <sighs> bonuses. Yeah, you get the uh, you get the uh, Chris DLC. <laughs> The Chris DLC. This hurts. This, I mean, this, <laughs> this, this does feel like something along the same lines as the the WAB format shifting away from away from cons. You know, there's a big announcement. This is a this feels like an adjustment based on him realizing where he is in his career, like the oh Shoot, I said a lot of things about what I was going to do in my career 10 years ago, but now that I'm here, I'm like, oh, I'm really running out of time. I can see. Yeah, but this doesn't like require much of his time. The essays are like three paragraphs each. I don't I, I think like the the actual leather bound process, like the business side seemed to be. I don't think he's involved uh, in that beyond yeah. like reviewing art. Yeah. It's but like my thing is like it's now and not just about his time, but his team's time. Yeah. True. That's true. Maybe they'll have some bandwidth after Stormlight, but I, I guess they'll, you know, have whatever Dan and Isaac are starting to do. So that that could that could maybe be problematic time wise. As he calls out here, like so, like uh, Steelheart and Skyward Leather Bounds. I kind of hope that he doesn't do Leather Bounds for every single book. Uh, I don't even know if I hope that he does them for every Cosmere book, just because, like, that's a lot. It's a lot for them to do, and it's a lot for people to buy, and it's like, why not just focus on the books that are coming out? I don't know. I wouldn't mm. be surprised if the secret projects never get leather bounds. Yeah, because like they have the premium special. editions are pretty close. They're pretty yeah. great. Yeah. I wonder if you can fit all three Cosmere ones in a... S- no, you probably can't fit them in a single leather bound. No. No. Because they, they had to split the Way of Kings. 
like maybe 300k yeah. you could do it like 400k you couldn't but maybe maybe 300 but r- regardless i I'd, I'd like the cosmere ones to have them you know like i, th- I think that'd be nice um, at least the cosmere series i would say so like stormlight and mistborn the big series, series yeah i, I think stormlight um, and mistborn will continue too i, th- I think eventually like dragon steel we get leather bounds. <laughs> of course, of course, we have to get white sand leather bounds eventually. I'm just thinking that. <laughs> yeah. the, the real definitive white <laughs> sand will be after the rewrite comes out and uh, the pros rewrite. And then 10 years from that, then we get the anniversary leather bound of that. Yeah. That's the yeah. definitive one. And then we'll still not have the Chris sequel. <laughs> <laughs> We're killing Joff. It's good. I like that. <laughs> well. But, we can we can only kill him because he made the unwise decision to not to die ahead of time when all of this was announced. The sensible thing. Yeah. <laughs> then Brandon yeah. will make you a fused or something, and then you have to suffer through white sand revisions. <laughs> I wouldn't mind Skyward ones, but like if there's gonna be other ones, I don't yeah, it's it's kind of a lot. Uh I definitely don't care about record or leather pounds. Oh no. Yeah, I'm curious if like the market would be there for a Skyward Leather Bounce. Like it's 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 his most popular non Cosmere yeah, thing, but it's sure. not Cosmere. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Yep. Yeah, like I think Skyward, you could do that. I I don't know about the others, but I wouldn't be surprised if they are like ah, non Cosmere ones. Yeah, that's a can of worms. We don't we don't dare do a Rhythmatist one. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's that, that's a bridge too far here, right? Uh, when when the sequel comes out, when maybe we'll we just out. bundle them together. Yes. When. Anyway, I do want a Nalthus essay. Okay, mm. that I I, I want it. Yes. I want to know what's going on with the cognitive anomaly. Yeah. It's been on our spreadsheet since 2018. I want in by 2028, which is closer. We're closer to 2028 than. 2018. I don't like that. I don't like that and at all. Arcanum and Bounded came out in 2016, 16. I believe. Yeah. Man, I don't like the passage of time, guys. Oh I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not a fan of this. <laughs> Just watch. We'll get an Alpha's essay, and there won't be anything in there about the cognitive anomaly. That would be pretty funny, actually. <laughs> that was like Nightblood, and we all know we're never getting Nightblood. Yeah. Yeah. 2016 was a year ago. So. Yeah. 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 No, it was it was four years ago. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember 2016, therefore it didn't happen. I, I mean, that's probably for the best. <laughs> next <Sorry>. question. <laughs> next question. <laughs> Keep it moving. <laughs> the next question is from Maxinator, who says, "Save the Katek." And um, this person is referring to like the, in Stormlight books, the Katek is the poem that's kind of the same way forwards and backwards. They're referring to the book titles. The Way of Kings, Words of Radiance says the Mirror of Rhythm of War, R O W W O R, both the, fingers, the uh, middle, middle. And everybody wanted the last one to kind of match the opposite of Way of Kings. Um, and Brandon says the Katek is diegetically saved. It's perfectly <laughs> fine in world. I'm not going to put what feels like a bad title on a book just to get the Katek to work. I spent years and none of them feel right to me. None of the titles feel right. I just got to go with what feels like the right title for me for Wind and Truth. So it will be titled Wind and Truth instead of the Knights of Wind and Truth. But he's saying that in the book, the book that's in the book is going to be called the Knights of Wind and Truth in Wind and Truth. Everyone follow? So he ended up putting a bad title on the book anyway. <laughs> but not a worse title. But not a worse title. Fair. Okay. Yes. This is true. According to our chat, the last stream we did, uh, the people, people definitely oh, were people like were, yeah. 70 to 30 thought Knights and Wind and Truth was a better uh, title. Really? Yeah, I know. Yeah. That was my yeah. response. <laughs> Sorry, democracy. They're both, they're both bad. Sorry, democracy. One's less bad. <laughs> <laughs> wind and Truth is definitely kind of a bland title. It's, it's bland. It's bland yeah. for sure. Knights, Knights of Wind and Truth to no, me is a little bit Knights. of a mouthful. Yeah, it's it's so it's tricky with book titles, right? Because you have to write the balance, the write the line between uniqueness and verbosity. And so 
yes, I think Knights of Wind and Truth is stronger from, oh, this is a unique type. This is a combination of words that we haven't necessarily seen before, but it's a lot to say. There, there, there's there's a reason Romeo and Juliet is called Romeo and Juliet and now and not like wherefore art thou Romeo but the other end is Wind and Truth is easier to say it's less of a mouthful you know it's the classic fantasy two words and something linking them together but it's Knights of Wind and Truth isn't even really that much more unique though in my opinion no. like it's not still a, that it's much. still an X of Y and Z like it, it's and like knights, knights, wind and truth are all like, yeah. I mean, it's a stormlight book, I guess. Like, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. like wow, inc- incredible. That's that's the distilled essence of stormlight. <laughs> yeah. We have talked about the title for a while on previous episodes. We have, so we, we probably, probably don't. don't need to talk about it very we long. We probably here. don't, but stay tuned. Can I actually bring up uh, another Wob uh, that I think is amusing? Yeah, sure. Um, sure. A lot of people, a lot of people really like the title "Stones Unhallowed," which was going to be the name oh, of book yes. three when it was yes. Seth. <laughs> Brandon made a comment on Reddit. I don't know if this has actually made it in Arcanum yet. Maybe it has. Uh, um, I didn't go to ge- general Reddit, so I, I haven't gone through those at all. In fact, I, I do. Actually I do remember this. the one you're talking about. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, but uh, but someone was saying like, oh, I wish he could have done that because that was a cool title. And Brandon said, problem is, it no longer works for this book as Zeth is no longer walking on stones. It's the only book where he isn't because <laughs> because they're going to Shinovar. Uh, I just thought that was amusing. Yeah, <laughs> it's the only book where he isn't. <laughs> it's a good point. <laughs> like Brandon probably is like, yeah, I mean that's a that's a great title, but I can't. I will get mercilessly mocked for this. Stones unhallowed no more. (laughs) It's just stones hallowed. Should have been stones hallowed. Unstones unhallowed. Dirt hallowed. (laughs) Sacred dirt. Soil hallowed. There you go. Easy. Nailed it. Next question. Next question. So someone named Vla- Flash Venture says, you mentioned that there was a CNR climax you've been wanting to write since an RPG campaign in 1999, which you've planned for Stormlight 5. And Brandon says, yes. And they continue. I think you said it was one of the best endings you've ever written. Now that you're almost finished with Stormlight 5, how are you feeling about that scene in the book? Uh, and Brandon then goes, I feel really good about it. It's there, it's written. Is it the best ending I've ever written? That's really your choice, not mine. Uh, one of the things is that the, one of the things is there will definitely be some surprising things. Uh, there will be, for this crowd specifically, some expected things. I feel like my job is to give proper foreshadowing so things can be seen. Uh, I've seen people make the right theories about lots of things. There's a few things I'm going to kind of blindside you with, but they're the sorts of things where you sometimes have twists in stories that aren't the sort you can fully anticipate. But I think I've done a spectacular job with what I'm doing for the ending. But again, that's for you to decide, not for me, so we'll see. I do think I have one of my best action scenes, as I've said before, that I'm very fond of, but you'll also have to give me space. It's hard for me to look at the book when I'm in the middle of it uh, and have that space that you need in order to really evaluate a work. So maybe this is a question for me in five years. Uh, And we don't know what that scene is that he wrote uh, from an RPG campaign. We don't know what it is at this point. Guess we'll have to wait till December. Then we'll see. Oh, that's right. It's December this year. Yeah. Yeah, it's December. I know. I know. Weird. We, we so really weird. don't have a December release date usually in our schedule. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Well, we're gonna be doing episodes on Christmas, baby. No, no, we won't. No, no. <laughs> uh, so you, can do, you can do an episode on Christmas. The content is king. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for picking the mic man that's good that's good I, lo- I love it every time it's good well i i do it because you keep telling me that you love it <laughs> okay fair, fair point fair point yeah i mean well, well i guess we'll just have to wait and see I, I i think this is fun because there was that intentionally blank where he talked about this so i think that's fun to yeah see a really really interested in what brandon considers his best uh like action scene or fighting scene or whatever he he said there yes yeah cool this next one is from spun lines 
We've seen Shallan's drawings appear to make people into better versions of themselves. But we also see her draw Yalb surviving the shipwreck and later find out he did. Is she actually seeing the future in which she just happens to inspire people to be better? If so, this would make Wit's warning to her in Oathbringer more concerning. Brandon, as will all sort of future sight slash foretelling in the Cosmere, it's not necessarily telling the future so much seeing possibilities. And Shallan has, we'll, we'll get into this in book five. Shallan's a little extra good at this. And I, on my, on the 17 shard account, uh, I, I, I was in the chat there and I put spiritual mumbo jumbo into the chat. And so Brandon says, he says the thing for spiritual mumbo jumbo. And then he says, it's not necessarily just spiritual mumbo jumbo 17 shard. I'm acknowledged. Yay. Happy <laughs> to know that there is more mumbo jumbo going on with Shalan. He said the thing. He just... said spiritual mumbo jumbo. That's good. He did. I like that. In this case, we have a very distinct reason why this is happening with Shalan that you might be able to put together. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> okay. Uh, Should be intuitively obvious to the sure. casual observer. Uh, but you should be able to see these things with Shalon very early in the book. In the books. As early as Words of Radiance, I was sticking in little nods to this. She's able to grab glimpses of the spiritual realm in ways that even other light weavers can't do. Light weaving always has a bit of this, right? And this comes back to what's going on with the realmatic theory and Plato's theories of forms as kind of a uh, foundational text that helped me develop this in my mind. You're seeing more perfect versions of who you could be. When she's doing a sketch, she's sometimes sketching not who you are, but who you could be. So basically, she lands weird. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Good yes. talk. But, but, also, but also, illumination is weird, right? Because... Renarin seems to have something similar going on. Uh, like whenever he heals Adolin, and I think it happens one more time. Uh, uh, yes. With, with Moash. Moash. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So there is... That's, that's not illumination that he's using in those moments. Though. No, but he has access to it. He has it. Okay. And also the Moash thing is, I, I think, pretty explicitly illumination. Yeah, true. Uh, and so I, I like the surge of illumination as uh you know for a long time in the fandom and in the community we've talked about like different realmic versions of the surges so like ever since we heard about spiritual adhesion, spiritual adhesion. um <laughs> okay we've been, brandon sure <laughs> we've been talking about oh what if you know each surge had like a cognitive version of it and a, and a spiritual or, or a way to interact with the cognitive realm or the spiritual realm and it's convenient, nice, helpful, interesting to think about illumination as being able to interact with the spiritual realm in, in, in ways that are different between light viewers and truth watchers, but in ways that have like a, a common shared foundation. Yeah. Also, Sean is weird. I feel also like Shalon is big. Yes. For obvious reasons. For, ob uh, for obvious Well, yeah, reasons. like we don't we don't even need to talk about them because they're so obvious. <laughs> this really has energy like, oh, you can go to the 17 shard. You know <laughs> they they know what's going on with this. It's like sure. some, sometimes sure, totally yes, know. sometimes not at all. You've never talked about this. For obvious reasons. We have a very distinct reason why this is happening with Shalon that you might be able to put together. Okay. She um. has a mental illness. I feel like you can also just tell how much he's like, hey, here's a wink nudge to book five that it's very clear. Yeah, I've written the book so I can, I can, I can tell you a little bit about it. <laughs> You can, it's a reference to something he's already done. It's not, yeah. uh, it's, it's, I think this, it does come out more clearly than when he's trying to make a hint about something he's yet to write. Yes. I don't know. Yes. It's a, there's a bit of a difference there. It, it's like, this is so specific. He has an idea of what he already did. It's like, yes. oh, Plato. Okay, cool. Yeah. You're, you're, you're going to Plato. Awesome. The cave. Yay. <laughs> Very obvious reason. You'll see. <laughs> okay. 
so I, I like have to replay as the cave now. Okay, yeah. you know. <laughs> That's the cave's name. That's oh. my that's my Stormlight Five uh, research. My pre reading. That's where the stone shamans are. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're actually in the cave. They're in the cave. Yeah, all the all the stone shamans are actually tied with ropes, and they cannot move. And there's a light behind them, and all they can see yeah. is the shadows. On the and wall. that's why Shalon's Story. weird like that. It's the all work connected, is not called baby. The cave. The work is called Republic. I'll read Plato's Republic anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's the allegory of the cave is yeah, yeah. is in the book Republic. Yeah. Yes. 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 I, I that is correct. Okay. Next one. Gany. Back to the top. To the top. With question or who asks, will we see Zysis again? <clears throat> Zysis Refliel, fan favorite among the fandom, on account True. of being one of the extremely limited number of dragons we know about. And like the one we saw on screen. <laughs> yes. And also also the one who's sassy little Drake who likes to make other people argue for their lives for his entertainment. I don't know if I'd call him a sassy little Drake. He's not very little. I'll, I'll Drake is say. not the word I was going to use, but then someone was going to complain that they have to bleep me. Oh, that's yeah. true. That's true. Um, <laughs> see? Character growth. <laughs> There's an arc in these Wob episodes. It's all coming together. <laughs> uh, will we see Zeiss again? Brenda says, almost assuredly, you will see Zeiss again. Uh, all of those really ancient Yolish dragons are around. You're going to be seeing them here and there. The story of the Cosmere is not really about them, but they are involved. Zeiss will be seen again. Zeiss will gotta... return in season two of the Cosmere. <laughs> of the Cosmere. Yes. I got a, I got a complaint. Okay. Why isn't the Cosmere about them? It is it is interesting because like they're obviously important. Dragon Steel, right? Like yeah. it's obviously been a core idea. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it does it does make me wonder. Like Well, I just think that if you have an interesting concept, like make the make it about make it about the concept. And I'm like, I like mm. he's put thought into the dragons and <laughs> yes, so, I don't know. Like we had the giant dragon wob dump yes. that other time. We yes. like we we know a lot about dragons now. We're like, oh, we're on board now. Dragons, so cool. And then the Cosmere is not really about them. <laughs> Come on, man. So I don't I know. Don't, I don't think dragons in the Cosmere are unique enough and interesting enough of a concept to like hang the entire however many dozens of books series it is. I'm not saying about hanging dozens of books on them. I'm like, why aren't they main characters ever? Or like just involved more, you know, like. Uh. Yeah. Or it's sort of like it almost sort of feels like. They're, they were put on a shelf, but not because like, like they ha he had to come up with a, a reason like personality wise that they wouldn't want to be involved. And that's the reason they're not involved. It's yeah. like, I don't know. I'm like, um, really? There aren't any adventurous young dragons who want to get into the current uh, um, conflict du jour? From what Brandon has said, I think that he thought dragons were like a little bit overdone when he was first starting to pull the Cosmere together yeah. and so that's why he didn't yeah. kind of make them bigger but I I would hope that he intends to have them be more prominent in the future just that yeah he hasn't yet yeah. Dragon Resurgence I, time I, I do want more yeah definitely seems like the 2005 to 2010 like era of like, oh, eh, it's too much Dragon Rider stuff. Yeah, we probably shouldn't do that. We'll, we'll, we'll do Dragon stuff later. Uh, and now we're at the time. It's like, let's have some Dragon stuff. That sounds great. But we've already oh, built dragons. Mistborn. We built Skadriel and Roshar where they're like not super important, really. So, yeah, it's a little tricky. But so like I'm glad in Secret Projects we got them, right? Like that that's cool. I wouldn't be surprised if um, he starts using them more than he originally planned to. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking of like the way that he, the Cosmia references are hitting harder now than I think he originally planned before. Yeah. When he's writing Lost Metal, it's like, we're going to do more of this because people apparently really like it. And I, I could imagine like as we start to see a, a few dragons and people are really liking it, he might say, hey, people like the dragons. Let's give them more dragons. 
he has a well of dragon lore to draw on now that if he wants I'm like, okay. yeah. i think it's also it's also possible for dragons to fall into kind of the yasna pitfall trap thing that brandon has talked about where they can be too interesting in a story that is not mm. all about dragons right Sure. So if you if you write, you know, we come back to Stormlight Six, and one of the main characters is now a dragon, <laughs> which which they're not, they're not, which which they're not, right? We know. And so you have to you have to read scenes with this unknown, unnamed dragon character acting next to Lyft, and who's gonna care about Lyft? Presumably, she's important. Be- yes, but dragons are very cool. It would be saying. easy for them to outshine her. Yes. 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 I agree or, you know, you. anyone. I, I'm yeah. thinking... I agree with you, though, Shannon. I would, I would like more dragons, too. I'd like more dragons. I, I thought Zysus in Tress was an extremely good use of uh, dragons. And, like, I, I, I want to see more of that. So, like, if we, if we get more like ancient dragons occasionally and we're getting these tidbits of what they're doing and what they're planning like i i think that'd be great like i think we should get more of that like what if there's like a dragon involved with the ghost bloods wouldn't that be awesome in mistborn ghost bloods that'd be sweet <sighs> oh how would kelsier feel about dragons interesting anyway that's that's maybe a can of worms but like like there's ways where there there could be some cool stuff and and I think you're right, Shannon. Like, it's an entire species. Like, there's why aren't there more around? Just like somewhere doing something. Yeah, I I would agree. Mm-hmm. I think we're getting there. I think Brandon is is going to be putting more dragon and more Shodel stuff. <laughs> and, clearly, and, <laughs> clearly. Like that's that's building up to something. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Shannon. From Dimidile. Uh, if a person used chemolurgy with an invested spike on another planet, could Harmony feel slash control them? Brandon says this is theoretically possible, but it depends on if there's a shard in attendance on that planet and what kind of interference there would be. So yeah, possible. So is he saying that it's it would be easier for Harmony if there wasn't a shard? I assume so. Yeah. That's my that's the takeaway. Yeah, I think I think if you are like the only shard on a place or there's no shard, it's just generally easier for you to influence stuff than like Roshar. Which is not <laughs> just full Roshar is like sardines in a can with shards. Like, ah, ah. Bunch that's of it. shards, bunch of interference. There's lots of interference. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I wonder exactly what interference means in this case. Just like it. I, I have, what came to mind immediately was like a combination of like a living vessel who has like a will and can see, like, and react to things, and also yeah. maybe like the meshing of intense or the uh, not meshing of intense. I, I was wondering if it was like the shard investing the whole planet and that just makes it harder for another shard to do oh. stuff. Hmm. But like maybe it was just a lot harder for autonomy to do things because like ruin and preservation just pervade that planet. Maybe it's especially hard for autonomy to do stuff on Skadrial for that reason because they created the planet so Mm -hmm. there's an ambiguous thing in this question so uh, an invested spike on another planet like are we like is it a spike like from Skadrial like with allomantic powers or whatever that's on another planet or is this like someone's spiked a sprint and you know they're on Roshar you know what I mean yeah for sure Um, and I wonder like Brandon could Th- they, his answer could depend on how he's interpreting that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Which is which is one of the reasons I'm not reading too much into this. I think there's like just too much ambiguity in yeah. what is being asked and how Brandon interpreted that. And the answer is pretty uh, open as well. It's there's no specifics here. Yeah. There's ways that that could happen, but not necessarily. Yeah. 
Cool. All right. Cheese Von Booty. Cheese Von Booty. <laughs> that's asks, a great, that's a great one. I love your little sigh when you said that. Um, Cheese Von Booty asks, are you going to make any more books with Tress? And Brandon says, my intent is for Tress of the Emerald Sea to remain a standalone book, and I have no intentions of going back to Tress or her story. I'm sorry. I just do think that it is good to have standalone stories now and then. It doesn't mean that some people might not appear, most likely being Ulam or Zysis, um, the people who were already Cosmere aware. But I do I do not plan on a Tress sequel. I know a lot of people are sad about that, but you know I am of the opinion that not everything needs a sequel. Lumar does have some relevance. Access to Aether, just uh, kind of just raw and unconnected from the main Aethers like that, is of value in the Cosmere. So Lumar does have interest in the wider Cosmere. For that reason, there's definitely stuff you can do with a bunch of raw Aether. So, I, I do agree, Brandon. Not everything needs a sequel. I think but it some is... things do. Some things do, and Brandon should stop writing standalone books with great sequel hooks, uh, just in, <laughs> in general, if he wants to, you know, complete all the books he wants to write. So, yeah, that, that might be for the best. To, I, I think I'm okay with Tress, like, standalone, and like Yumi being standalone. Like, I'm cool with that. I think both of them ended fairly solidly on, yeah. hey, this is a standalone story. I, and I agree with Brandon also that the point to me, like when I finished I, the character stories are kind of done. Like I don't, I don't yeah. need to see more Tress as much as I like her. I don't need to see any of the other characters really. Um, but I would love to see more of the planet. So like if, I don't know if it shows up in another book, if there's another book set there, I would be totally happy with that. I guess the main thing is like, I want to see the rest of the Aethers and that can <laughs> happen anywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's like the same way we don't think of the Emperor's soul as an Elantris sequel. Yeah. Uh, there could totally be another book on Lumar that is not a trust sequel. Yeah. 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 Easy, Absolutely. Busy. Or like something that like we go to Lumar in space age and it's obviously not a trust sequel because we're coming in from the perspective of like your space travelers rather than people who like live on the planet or something. Right. Cool. All righty. So the tech asks, uh, so this friend has thus far been very distant. Is this typical of Ice Friend? Rangook Brennan says yes. Uh, the Taka then asks, Is it maintaining a particular distance because of Nightblood and would normally have permitted its death to summon it as a blade by now? And Brennan goes, No, it's not really Nightblood. There are other reasons, but how about this? Book five and find out. You'll get another reason in book five. Good old Fafo. 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 I mean, <laughs> that's a <laughs> what's it? Oh my god, I forgot the name of the people in Stormlight. Who have who have all the consonant names? Thalen. Thalen. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a Thalen, Thalen name. name. It's a Thalen acronym. Before. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's Zeth's like flashback book, so you know we're obviously book, getting yeah. more Zeth than we've ever had. Yeah. Right. That would be the time for it. Yeah, because. Knowing what we know about Ox, uh, mm -hmm. there is there's a clear difference, but it's one of those intriguing questions, those intrig like that intriguing tension of we know in Sunlit something happened. Very unclear. Is like is is Ox different from the others or is yeah. Ox typical of the others? Um yeah, for sure. Really, really interesting to see. But I think this this is a Raffo, but I I love it. It's book five and find out. It's like you'll, yeah. you, it's not Raffo, but like you'll actually get to read and find out very soon. <laughs> like, okay, that's that's nice. I kind of wish he'd said wind and truth and find out. So <laughs> yeah, what, a, <laughs> what a fool! What a fool! That's actually the diegetic book. You know, the that's diegetic. The <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> although, although people often abbreviate it to just WTF. WTF? <laughs> what a fool! <laughs> That's Sorry, pretty dude. good. That's pretty good. I have... <laughs> what the find out? I'm ruining my reputation. I am surprised <laughs> yeah. Nightblood isn't relevant here. That that is a little surprising yeah, to me. Yeah, you know? I would have I would have expected you know the Zeth friend to be like, yeah, I don't want to. I'm just gonna stay away from that. <laughs> it's like that. That seems. That's that a seems situation also there. bad, like the Dawn Shard for Ox, you know, like that, that seems like, like that friend could be dangerous. Was theoretically around when 
um, when Nightblood killed Terabangian. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So clearly it's fine, yeah. right? And like even Battle of Phelan Field, right? Mm. Right? Like, presumably. Oh, yeah. True. True. Right? Yeah. Like he's using Nightblood a lot there. <laughs> I guess, yeah. For- fortunately, fortunately, Zeth had. Oh, I wonder. No, this is an interesting question. I wonder why. Because by the end of the of the Zeth sequence in the Battle for Thal- Thalen Field, Nightblood was fully like feeding on him. Yeah, you know that there were like the, the black veins going up his arm, and like Lift joined in and like tried to heal him, but then uh, caught a case of the Nightbloods. It is interesting <laughs> that Nightblood did not reach for the High Spren. As a source of investiture, in the same way that the Dawn Shard yeah. did, I think that it, I think it would have. I just don't think it got that far, right? Mm-hmm. Like, but why, the, but why the fact would that it go... it's just on his arm, like I feel like it has to be mm-hmm. gone. I feel like, like it just wasn't far enough. Maybe it just needs to be a thing that you need to stab. Like if you, <laughs> like maybe it it'd be, be bad in Shadesmar if you bring Nightblood there and you like attack a spren like. A, a, would assume it would kill the spren right i would have something so yeah uh and like maybe just the way the spren form is like just isn't enough uh, to like be really affected i don't know the thing that i was the way i was justifying that was by going well the dawn shard is kind of a very internal thing like uh, as i understand Mm. it which is mind you no one really understands dawn shards right now but like as i understand it the dawn shards like integrates into your soul and becomes a part of it and that is much more you know call it intimate call it invasive than whatever bond exists between a person and a spren and whatever bond if any exists between a person and nightblood and so maybe the dawn shard just has access to everything like you know you have a spren bond there's a little bit of like overlap of your souls between the person and the spren and so the dawn shard because it is a, so deeply integrated with you it is essentially integrated with the spren as well and it can reach out to it but nightblood is an external force and so maybe even if you like kill a person kill a radiant with nightblood maybe that is a little bit extra painful for the sprint because they lose a little bit of their soul maybe yeah but, that but can be you possible. don't actually automatically kill the sprint it's like nightblood isn't integrated with zeth's identity field <laughs> Whereas the Don shard <laughs> would be with six souls which to be fair the Don shard in sunlit man does does did let him you know like suck up all investiture and like metabolize it and stuff so oh yeah i i sure that that seems good enough for me interesting idea hmm anyway we'll learn about zaspren in uh wind and truth so well wtf it's still Club. Stormlight Five in my head. I just yeah I, yeah I, yeah. I yes. Every time I hear "When in Truth," I'm surprised. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. It, just like the last Stormlight book is still sometimes Oathbringer in my mind. It's like <laughs> <laughs> that was the last one, right? Is uh, that yeah. song of changes? <laughs> All right. This next one comes from our very own Windrunner Seventeen, David on the podcast, and he goes with very specific questions that he might be able to actually get answers to and put your comments below if you remember that this was a thing in the bands of morning after edwarn has admitted that he is trying to distract wax from pursuing the set he off he mentions offhandedly that wax should still look into the man that the night street gang killed on the train to new saran and that wax would be impressed who is this man, and why did Edwarn say this? Brandon, Raffo. <laughs> why? Why is that a Raffo, Brandon? Because it's the most, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> you definitely just forgot it completely. That's a, I don't remember what this is. I don't, I don't know. I vote, I, vote, I vote that we don't talk about this at all, and just listeners and viewers... You know, just leave your comments. See if you remember what the hell's going on here. 
<laughs> no cheating. Don't go look at the books. Just just tell us, do you remember what is being talked about here and what the context is? Like, at least something I like... I all the context. There's no more context <laughs> that, that, is, that, that is all the context. Uh... The context is the question. <laughs> it's like, I don't even remember. I don't know. David's always remembered this. He, this has bothered him, I think, since 2016, <laughs> actually, when the book came out. Like, I just can't see... This feels like a specific hanging a lampshade on a thing that Brandon could plausibly remember that something's there. Because Brandon does remember and it's like, oh, yes, tee hee hee, that one's very specific thing that one time. So, like, it's not like some esoteric timeline thing that he's never going to remember, right? Like, it, 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 it's, it's plausible he could remember. Like, Bloody Tan, at least him raffling me about Bloody Tan. Like, okay, there could be something weird there. That's unfathomable to me that we never got anything more of that in Lost Metal. But sure, fine. Fine. For this particular thing, I could see it being something where Brandon didn't actually have anything specific. (laughs) And he was just like, okay, so here is... uh, Edwarn is going to try and lead Wax down this other road. He's going to mention this mysterious thing. And I don't actually have anything for the mysterious thing. Okay, I'm just sure. going to lay a thing out there, but there's nothing really behind it. But then the only reason why I could think of why he would raffle it instead of just explaining that <laughs> is that, that he yeah. has now forgotten what it is. <laughs> and so he's like, oh, what is this? Uh, raffle, mm. there's, there's something, I'm sure. I maybe had something planned. Uh, maybe. That's plausible. I like that, actually. That's 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 solid. <laughs> yeah, I've I've always thought that Edwarn is just making things up. Also I... a possibility. It's just so intriguing. We're never going to see Wax be impressed by this. <laughs> I know. Exactly. That, I think that's exactly. I, I'm going to try and channel David here. It's like, yeah, wh- why even have that? We're just not ever exploring this ever. It's like, OK, all right. We're just going to hang that next to Zane's spike and then yes. this thing. Yes. And and bloody tan. Bloody tan. Like at least. Oh, and the bands. Who drained the bands? Yeah, yeah. Mm, this I mean, era four, we'll all be eating our words when the last book explores every single one of these. Like, remember <laughs> that time the Night Street game killed? It was this actually guy. so. It was actually Bloody Tan is the person who was murdered there, and he comes back to life because he never died. As a cognitive shadow and then he on makes a spaceship. The bands. Yes, he, 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 made dra- the bands. he drains. He drains the bands. He drains the ah, bands. Yes, yes, yes. All coming together. The true villain of the Mistborn series. <laughs> Bloody Tan. If only Wax looked into it, then none of this would have happened. <laughs> yeah. I, I, do, I, do, I do think it's most likely that like he just forgot what this was or something. Um, and, and I don't mind like unanswered things like that, I guess. Um, I, yeah. Pardon me. Like optimistically, it's possible that he like sees it as like a, something he could tie into an era three Era two and era three are more tied together than I expected they would be. Sure. And the way, the way that lost metal ended, like there's, there's some, there's things going forward. There's bloody tan. There's, there's stuff. And I, I could see him thinking this is like, maybe this is like a hook that I, that I could potentially use in era three for something. Oh, by the way, there was this guy. And, and then like fans would be like, Oh, it's actually that guy. And it would be kind of a fun, like obscure fans, connections. And like, fan <laughs> singular. David <laughs> it. And then anyone who listens to the show is like, Oh, that was a thing. I don't remember that at all. Interesting. So you're it, if that happens in era three, you're ready, everyone. <laughs> you know the secret lore, secret history four and a half, man. This will be in there. Tan. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> All right, back to the top from Citadel K. In the prologues of the first five Stormlight Archive books, we see the same evening from the perspective of various key players in the event that transpires. Will the second half of the Stormlight Archive share this trend? Or perhaps, will we end up seeing five different perspectives on a different event in those prologues? And Brendan says, yes, you will see a different event, five different perspectives on it. You have guessed correctly. This was always my assumption, yeah. uh, and it's yep. just very exciting to imagine what this new event could be. Um, I have no stuff. guesses. Ashen I have no stuff. guesses. <laughs> it's Harold. Harold stuff back half. Harold stuff back half. 
yeah. Different perspectives no on the funeral. Right. Different perspectives on the funeral of all of the front half characters. It's happening <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. They all nice. died off screen. Nice. This is their funeral. <laughs> Actual, actually, no. <laughs> what? What? If, no, no, no. I, I, I like this actually because you could you could have like a, a bunch of funerals. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, well, see, no, no, no. But the prologue can happen earlier than when the books are set. So it could be like a oh, bit yeah, after five, Stormlight five years 5. years ago, seven years we, ago. Right? What if it is a Stormlight 5 climax event that happened in secret, but we're only going to find oh, out oh. Ten, like 10 years later this happened? That, that could be exciting. That's interesting. Yeah. That's, that's I like cool. that idea. I like something in the time skip. The the thing about the, the, the first five prologues, was that it was perspectives into essentially the inciting incident yeah. of the of the entire yeah. series, right? Mm. And so I think I would want something similar. Sure. I just be, because we don't know what the back five is all about, we don't know what the what incites that thing, right? What could possibly change the status quo of ten years in the future? That Valor shows up. Valor Hell shows yeah. up. Hell at, yeah. a, at a fourth, a fourth being kicks so down the door on this planet and is like, "What's up? I'm here with my knights, Valorous. I have paladins. Things are gonna be different now." Yeah, and also, <laughs> this Kaladin guy, he belongs with my paladins. <laughs> Calvin the Paladin, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. I think he can't ever use the word paladin in the series. I, now. He probably oh, can't, in honestly. Any, in the Cosmere now, yeah. or like at least. <laughs> At least Stormlight. It's just such a yeah, yeah. You can't. It is. Can't. It, it brings up the rhyme. So, mm. I I think it probably has to be an inciting incident. It, though it would be really cool to see like looks into an event on Ashen. That's Harold Haroldy. That would be really cool. That could be. It could be. So, it doesn't need it's to be just the that inciting. There are incident. only two of them as as flashback characters. Yeah, but we could get. You know, we they don't need. Maybe to be, they yeah. all go to modern Ashen. That, that, wow. would, be, that would be awesome. <laughs> that, there, oh, there has to be a reason. Kick ass? Yeah, Sil all... Silence Divine is actually. Book six. I, I've I've actually <laughs> always thought in the back half that like we we will physically go to Ashen or and like yeah. and stuff. Or it's like, like or to. or we when we start Stormlight Six, we went to Ashen five years ago. It sucked. Something really bad happened, and I don't know. Well, let's make it relevant to the plot of six <laughs> another to ten. terrible thing happened in Ashen. Another What's terrible new? thing happened on Ashen. Actually, Ooh. actually, so actually, what what happened was when Gavilar died, he went to Braze. <laughs> yeah, and, cool. and, Braze and, is my theory. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, between uh, between five and six in the gap, uh, our heroes go to Braze to for whatever reason, sure. and Gavilar's there. Sure. And the prologues of books six through ten are Gavilar's death no. again. <laughs> Redux, <laughs> but but it's on brains. <laughs> Dying a brains. second time. Yeah. Gavilar dies a second time, see, and we're uh, gonna see it five times. <laughs> he deserves it. See, yes. So, no, no, no. See, I, I was gonna make a joke off the funeral thing, and now now we're back here, so we can do that. That was like there's a funeral for all the characters, but it, it ends with someone coming back to life rather than like they're 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 dead, Ooh. and then they come back mm. to life rather than oh, that's it's a Gavilar. That's 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 uh -huh. a yeah yeah that's yeah. yeah. Like, and, and what if and what if book tens is Gabalar comes back? <laughs> I, I I did see um I think someone on Reddit in the last week or so um theorized that it could be Shalon's wedding. But, <laughs> <laughs> so there's that theory oh, but we worked so hard to make brandon cut it from the books <laughs> that's right <laughs> oh my know, god that's a, listeners that's an inside joke we didn't that, actually no. we have no, no. brandon the writes the books he's the gonna books. write we there he he we had nothing to do with it no uh sometimes I, I, he just makes weird choices Yes, like Cytonic. Um, but uh, <laughs> just the entire book. The entire book. It was a choice. 
Uh, I, I do think it's most likely to be something that happens in the time skip because presumably yes. a lot of the flashbacks that we're going to get of the characters are going to be filling in what happens in the time skip, right? Shirley? Right? I would expect it's like, not, I don't know if I would arms. say a lot, but like but some, probably a fair amount. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Certainly, I would expect Yasna's flashbacks and Renard's flashbacks, but especially Yasna's to go all the way back to all the way back, you know. Yeah, her child. yes. childhood. Yeah, we, we have to. Because we need right. to explore like, things there. Yes, but the flashback characters are not the prologue characters. Not necessarily. Yeah. yeah. No. Also true. Yes. Well, they haven't been. So, like, it easily could be some other big event that happens, like, year seven or year eight in the time jump into this, like, a few years later. It could be all the heralds. It could be all the heralds is the prologue. It could yeah. be. That'd be sweet. I Except keep yes, I, well, what if book 10 is Hoyd wit like witnessing something that went down on Ashen? That'd be fun. <sighs> sweet. That'd be fun. Be sweet. Oh, book, book Hoyt. Then is actually Hoyd dancing with Hoyd as a prologue yes, character was... is kind of intriguing me. Oh. Any anything where we're actually in Hoyd's POV is like yeah. for like any extended a, time. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. And the epilogues of the current Stormlight books do not count. That's not sufficient. Uh, for me. a little bit. A little they bit. They're cool, but like they're, they're fine. Cool. They're well, they're very not in his POV. Right. They're like very like distant. Yeah, they're they're, they're pretty distant. Yeah, they're pulled back. Uh, anyway, the, the thing that yeah. I always mm -hmm. come back to is that one time that Brandon said that the front half of Stormlight is kind of radiant focused yep. and the back half is heralds focused, yep. and that's always really exciting to me. We gotta go to Ashen, right? Surely, surely. At some point, we gotta. Like, yeah. why would it be in the same system? There's gotta be <laughs> just to blow I it mean, up to get the humans there. I mean, maybe that's that's possible, actually. But I mean, if they're if they're teleporting, like they don't need to be. They're wind the runners. They can go to space. We have wobs about this. They can just lash themselves there. True. With enough okay. stormlight. <laughs> With enough stormlight. Yeah. Great. Anyway, let's go to the next mm. one. Yeah. I'm surprised we talked that much I mean, about that one. <laughs> but prologue oh. theorizing is fun. Storm, like, stormlight, stormlight conversations have the habit of blowing up. Yeah, let's do another much Stormlight like one the then. Much like the books themselves. Yeah. Much like Ashen. Mm-hmm. Hey. From Noah. Talon has confused me in Stormlight. Why was he able to withstand so long? <laughs> Great question. Brandon says no there are a fused <laughs> Brandon <laughs> says not Argent uh, there are multiple reasons but the prime one that you should be assuming is he was just really 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 determined how about this there will be a few hints in Stormlight 5 that might give you some help on this another Watfo Watfo <laughs> Watfo Tone's Tolan, whole whole shtick, his whole situation is the kind of thing where I'm just not worrying about it right now. He's, um, he's just that buff. Pe he's good. People are really, I feel like there's a lot of discourse about like, <laughs> is Tone really that cool? No, no human could possibly be that cool. I, you know, and it's the kind of thing there must be a trick or on the other side, no, he really is just that cool. And I'm suspicious of this answer from Brandon until we actually do what to foe, what foe. Yes. But this is, this is, <laughs> I, I read the occasional um, anime or manga. I read a, I read a, a manga. This is very shown in anime. He was oh, just yeah. that determined. This is she a very anime. Cool. He's yes. a very anime, <laughs> very anime and his answer right here. There is no doubt in my mind that when Brandon was imagining town, he was like, he is the manliest man to ever man. And he just withstood four millennia of torture. Uh, well, I think part of it is at some point he went completely insane and like disconnected and like the rest of the torture did not matter because he was sure. mentally completely checked sure, out. Sure. He was gone. But, but a big part of it is, yeah, he was just that good. And yeah. now he's paying the price for it. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which I, yeah, because yeah. it's like there there was a cost. It wasn't just he was so cool, but you don't even get to you don't you you can't even tell that something that bad happened to him. And I feel like the cost that we've seen Telnus had to pay does match more with 
something really bad happened and he was tortured that whole time. It, mm-hmm. One of my favorite scenes in Stormlight is just that town interlude or just like mm. how long yes. had it been? Agreed. And just like, Agreed. oh, like that's so good. And it's just like, mm. oh, oh no. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> town. <laughs> Too long. Too long. Mm-hmm. Like th- that that's it's a scene with such ambiance, kind of like shadows for silence, where it's just like, oh yes. Very good. There, there is there is something really interesting in the kind of narrative structure of that interlude where we are in town's POV, but we are listening in on other conversations that are happening around him, but he is completely ignoring those because they don't register. They're just noise that happens around him. It's a narratively speaking, literary speaking. It's an interesting, interesting interlude. And I hope we get some tone flashbacks like in his book when that comes, I hope some of his flashbacks are like after returning or something where we can like mm. get more like, that like a whole oh, flashback like just like, oh yeah yeah, yeah that'd I, be cool. I know matt on the show he does not find town to be interesting because it's like he's just that good he's just he's just buff strong great fighter he, he did it you know like i i can understand that on the other hand in fantasy i do kind of like mythic figures it's just like yeah. yeah, this was the guy who did that. And like, I mean, could anyone else in the Cosmere do it? Probably not. You know, he's very Atlassian like that. Mm. 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 He, he is wow. a huge analog for Atlas, actually. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like there there's two different ways of liking a character. I don't like him in the same way I like Kaladin because I don't really know anything about Tom. Right. All we know is that right. he's yeah. the cool guy. Um, maybe that'll change. It'd be like it would be nice to get to know more of Tom the person instead of Tom the figure. Yeah. But yeah, I think if you're trying to go into it and like try and like Tom the way you like, you know, um, the other main characters, it's not going to work the same. But that that doesn't have to be a bad thing. That's more like a mythic type mm-hmm. thing 100 you know? percent, mm-hmm. and i think that's fitting it's, it's hard to like find relatable qualities or really dig into a character's head when they themselves have basically dissociated right out of it they're not yeah. even oh i find really that extremely relatable. there <laughs> <laughs> okay fair like i i'm again he hasn't shown up to any of these more. episodes <laughs> <laughs> he's just saying stuff <laughs> <laughs> you guys are just noise <laughs> just blah wow. blah 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 it's like oh, i had some things i wanted to say <laughs> here's some like bottle caps episodes. guys it's just drug drug test episodes it are the worst torture itself. truly <laughs> drug test episodes are the worst torture yeah yeah just ask alex mm. Just ask Alex, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me read the next one uh, from Parshindi of Ruidian. Do dragons always go through their early life in human form, or would being a Shodel also be possible for a young dragon? <laughs> this is some, some recent wobs from the end of last year where he talks about how they begin their life in the form of a human and brandon says the way i have it right now which will give this as a word of brandon that could change because i haven't written dragon still yet uh it's a human form i imagine dragons like amphibians that they uh, have part of their life cycle the uh, the yellowest dragons they mate in human form they bear children in human form raise children mostly in human form but their dragon form is equally part of their identity um so no shodo dragon no, shut no, down. I, I think that's boring. I probably agree, but my pride of arguing with people on the internet saying that it's like, no, <laughs> their humanoid form is Shodel. Uh, I I really like being right, actually. So I, I'm cool with this, actually. I I think it's dumb that you know, previous wobs aside, knowing that dragons are Fane and knowing that Shodel are the human equivalent of Fane, essentially, why would a Fane creature have a non-Fane form and give birth to their non-Fane? Like, I, 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 I think this exists because of Brandon's mental picture of how dragons are in fantasy. They are shapeshifters and they shapeshift into human forms. But the lore that he has established for dragons in his fantasy world 
does not lead in that direction. Or that we've wrong. only gotten in WOBs that we have no context for about dragons being feigned and yes. how that works at if, all. Yes, okay, cool. If, Just if, saying. if, if Brandon in canon says dragons are not feigned, then I will, I will accept, yes, they have a human form as, yeah, sure, you defaulted to the default default option and you made them human we don't know anything about fane fane like we don't they're, they're white and there's another competing ecology that's it like, we know that they are a different ecology we yeah, know but, like, that what does that even mean humans. what does that even mean practically it means that humans are not a part of the fact <laughs> I this think it could be a lot more complicated than This that. is definitely the tone of so many internet arguments. <laughs> <laughs> you get to see the tone. Well, it's you know great. what? I'm right, baby. That's, that's, you get that's, to see it. You get to just see it in human form. Um, <laughs> not Chodel form. Not no. Chodel form. No. Human but form. But the thing about here, it, you know what? It is, su- it is super boring that... Not even just like the the mating and and burying the children in human form, but the also raising in human form. Sure, it's like sure, okay, you're just humans until the kid is like sixteen or something, sure. and then and then you all become dragons again. Like, what's the point? Why aren't you like where are the baby dragons? Where is the you can't be a parent dragon? Yeah, that, that, you can only be fair. a dragon yeah. again once your kids are out of the house. Like. This I don't know I don't I don't know if I got this. We do need a, a short cast more. after dark episode exploring like can they mate in dragon form? <laughs> Didn't or... we talk about this? I, I don't think they did. Not on stream. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, I know that Grace wanted to talk about. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. She yeah. wanted to talk about this. Um, I do have like the one problem to me with so. I don't think you can have them in human and Shodel form because then they're like two. Because I, I, in my mind, I'm imagining that humans and Shodel cannot reproduce together. Sure. And so, like, then if you do that with dragons, like, it would be two distinct species of dragons because then they can't, like, intermingle with each other. Sure. In those non dragon forms, right? So that would be a kind of a weird thing if they could, like, unless they're just all Shodel. But I don't know. Which is, which is what I would have expected. Maybe like, I they have I, phantom limbs. They have invisible <laughs> vestigial arms that fan, are invisible. Phantom alabaster white skin and <laughs> phantom lizard-like features. Yes, of I, course. I'm they, just saying we don't know any information about how Ada Nalcium created Yolan, what the situation was. We don't know the situation with Fane at all. It's super mm-hmm. vague. I always, I was surprised dragons were labeled as Fane. And I I would have thought that we have humans, Shodel, and these dragons are like these more powerful creatures. And it, I don't think it makes sense that they just kind of belong to one of those two groups. Like maybe there's, maybe they're the bridge between the humans and the Fane. Okay. Like there, there's lots of reasons that we, we just don't know anything about it, that it could make perfect sense in the history of Yolan. Okay. I guess I would have to go see more of Yolan. Yeah. Um, yeah. We don't have any of that. I'm just like, I guess yeah. we don't know anything about Fane yeah. yet. Yeah. No, nothing. Really. <laughs> Basically. If there, if the, the dragons are not like all white, like the Shodel, right? Uh, so, like no, to me, it bothered me that they are faint just because they have yeah. sort of thick limbs. Yeah, that that's so, weird. Like, that that's that's like okay, but not like super faint. I don't I don't know. What's a super faint? I I just <laughs> I just mean they're not very faint. Like maybe there's well, when, some when relationship Yoku. here. But, okay, like. I do think this is probably just Brandon choosing to do it this way for like writerly reasons. He has his things that he wants to do, oh, yeah. and so he's choosing to do it this way. Yeah, for sure. As opposed to like, I, I think it being Shodel could make some sense, but he, well, I think he has thoughts. As as a singer stan, as a as a fan of the singer people on Roshar, I think <laughs> okay. Brandon makes too much of his fantastical worlds default to the human experience and the human species 
And that does disservice to all of the other things that he puts in there and seemingly like wants to make an equal part of the Cosmere, but doesn't actually commit to making an equal part of the Cosmere. Damn. I think we can just blame Aiden Alcium for that. Like he has a human bias. Well, but but Aiden Alcium made so many different species able to bang. Yeah, and he made them so that they were interbangable. <laughs> you can't say this on the internet. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's lots of human singer oh. hybrid things and things like that, and like, like there's a lot, lot, lot and- of hybrids. And Brandon said that's because of. Uh, Aiden Alcium's design, okay? And so, like, who knows what Aiden Alcium's weird, weird design is? Like, maybe, maybe humans and Shodel can have hybrids. We don't know. Okay. I will I will accept this if the Cosmere Endgame is kind of a critical analysis on Aiden Alcium as being uh, human... Uh, 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 centrist? Uh, centrist is not, I would like, sympathizer. A human sympathizer. Yeah. You know what I think would be really cool if this actually happened? Um, If there were actual like differences or restrictions uh, between like uh, Skadrian humans can't do it the same way that like the Roshar and humans can. Like I like what if they can't interbang? I think I think we can though. I, I think I think that that that's been confirmed. I, think, that we, that I just think it would be, be kind of more neat and interesting and if if the if the things that they tell us are different about these humans or the different species actually mattered. I don't know. That's just me. Um I would wouldn't it be neat if like the the specific Skadrian humans were somehow different in some interesting and unforeseen ways than all the other humans in the Cosmere? That's me. Yeah. I yeah. want that. Especially since there are like separate creation events. Right? They were for the humans. Created. Yeah. 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 Guinea, I think Brandon decided this just to mess with you because he would <laughs> frustrate you. <laughs> yes. yes. Honestly, at this point, I've been in the fandom long enough and I've known Brandon long enough. Not impossible. That, that's not that's impossible. really what he was planning in 2001 <laughs> when he wrote Dragonsteel Prime. He's, look, uh-huh. he's, he's retconned a lot of things. I fully believe that he will retcon things just to mess with me. Yeah. Like ATM. Well, that's <laughs> messing with other people, not me. But yes, it, like ATM. Yeah. <laughs> like you. So Panhead Bolt asks, in Man's Warning, it's mentioned that the Melwish airship has a third type of bathroom in it. Something not mentioned yet in the Lost Metal. Are these gender neutral bathrooms? Are they for a third gender or are they for something else entirely? And Brandon goes, we'll delve into that later. You should assume it is along the lines of a gender neutral bathroom. So that's fun. I got, oh, man. I got a comment. <laughs> what? So the the guy who wrote the concept of four genders, but the genders are really um, men, women, horny men, horny women. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not... Or men with a libido and women with a libido. Um, I'm not totally sure I'm on board with something like a third gen. I don't. I don't trust. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm I'm more hesitant and cautious on what this could possibly what mean. What does that even what mean? Does, because just if it's a third gender, just say it's a third gender. Yeah, what? What? what is along the lines <laughs> yeah. of a gender? He, exactly. he didn't say third gender. He said along gender the neutral. lines of gender neutral, gender neutral, which I would sure. assume means like anyone can use that. Sure. That is yeah. what I would assume that specific thing means. But why right, along the right. lines? But that's why that's that that's exactly yeah, that's, me and Josh are on the exact same yeah. thing here. Why not just say just you should assume it's a gender neutral happens. bathroom? Why say along the lines of a gender yes. neutral bathroom? Yeah, I think that's I've, just yeah, Brandon speaking, like his speaking patterns being kind of weird. But I I don't know. Maybe it's not. Maybe, like I'm not. I won't say that I have a lot of trust in him to get this kind of thing mm-hmm. right first try, but I I would not get too worried from this specifically, is Maybe, I guess where I, I'm at. I'm not worried. I just don't trust him. 
maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's I have ideas in this line and I need to make sure my beta readers actually agree that my stuff isn't stupid. So yeah. I'll, I'll just be okay. a little vague, I guess. Like fully maybe, possible. Maybe it's fully possible. <laughs> Better than Way of Kings, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, one, women, one some, it, it could be some weird like southern scadrian like yeah uh, masked people i don't know some kind of weird like cultural thing this is where the maskless go to take a poop the mask See, southern neutral boring. slash slash maskless slash something weird you take mask. off your mask it's to not a gender here. it's not like a separate gender but like the mask I'd be down. thing, I guess. I'd be down. Yeah. Like that, that, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Make it interesting. You know, make it a kind of like orange and blue morality. It doesn't make sense to us, but it does to them. Yeah. yeah that, that would be great. I, I love stuff like that. Uh, bet, better than the, the singer genders. Oh, that was, that was, yeah. That in retrospect, it's like, yeah, that's, hmm, that's interesting choice. Yeah. I, I, I was, I was going to give Brandon a little bit of, like leeway with the with the singer stuff and go oh well that was the 2010 brandon but it wasn't the 2010 brandon it was the 2013 2014 yes. brandon yes and the brandon who wrote this bathroom situation was the 2015 2016 yes. brandon yeah. <laughs> so like i i think that's the same brandon who who made a horny woman a gender <laughs> Uh, uh, they, they, you know, maybe, maybe we need an episode a after Stormlight Five, and we're like, okay, we we gotta we gotta do some padding, you know. We'll we'll do Krem, oh. obviously, you know. Yeah, for well, sure. Krem cast, yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to. And then it's just like weird choices Brandon made in the Cosmere. It's like that was that was an interesting choice with those singer genders. <laughs> I'll put a Amaram turning into crystal monster up there too. It's like that's hmm, interesting. Things like that. Bro. <laughs> Just that's, that's an interesting choice, Brandon. I don't know about that. It sure was something you chose to do. Moash getting his black bridge four uniform. Like, hmm, okay, very edgy. Okay. Ah, there was a, there was a beautiful beautiful comic on Tumblr of yes. I saw that of 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 Moash walking into into the tailor's shop and it's like I want this yes, yes. But buy it black <laughs> like my soul <laughs> like my soul that was great very beautiful good. art beautiful art cool. you can't AI that <laughs> speaking of uh, not bathrooms but back to dragons. <laughs> um, Again, ever since our interview, it's a dragon, yeah, dragon, dragon way. question. Dragon maybe question. It's a, maybe it's a bathroom for dragons. I mean, maybe. that'd be awesome. Yeah. Look, that, that would be Let's... tight. We, we yeah. Maybe dragons have a big role in Southern uh, <laughs> no. Skadriel. Like that, that, that'd be pretty cool, too. I'd be okay with I, that. I, I have seen the idea that it's maybe bathroom for like for Chandra. Oh, no. Yeah, but how many Chandra are down there? Like, that, like that's the thing. Anyway, well, anyway. are how many dragons backwards. are down there? Anyway, we're <laughs> let's fair. Yes. So the dragon knight asks, "Are we going to see any dragons in action in the Cosmere before the Dragon Steel novel? Because they are thinking just like us. <laughs> we want some more dragons." Brandon, maybe. Once again, there are some more Anne McCaffrey style dragons in the Cosmere. Maybe I'll get around to doing that. Uh, I don't know what the sassy toy I'm reading this is. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, if you want to see dragons in action, then we're talking about, I mean, well, Cultivation's been doing a lot. Has she? Has she though? <laughs> Since when? Has when? she though? That's she not the same. Like three meetings with people. <laughs> And they haven't the even seen them all. <laughs> yeah. No. Seen them referenced. And, yeah. Certainly looking forward to finding out what a lot cultivation has been doing. Yeah, that, that would be great. But that's not the same. I want to just see In a action. dragon doing cool stuff. And I want to see them taking a dump on Southern Skatrian airship. <laughs> in dragon form. In dragon form. In dragon not form, in not yeah. human form. Okay. Yeah. It's just the maybe 
same vibes as the as yeah. the earlier question. It's a okay. Yeah. Not, yeah. not enthusiastic here, I guess. Okay. It's it's interesting that that uh, uh, Brandon has brought up the kind of non high dragons. Yeah, uh, I don't care about those. A, a couple of times. I don't care about those. Yeah. Well, I think he does. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Okay. I, I think I think we're gonna see drakes and drake links before we see like proper dragons. Yeah, that's probably true. That's okay. But, I'm done for that. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe we get the dragon riders uh series before you know proper dragons yeah cool well cool. not much to talk about on this one let's move <laughs> on to uh question from maury willow <laughs> okay let's go this one all right so gang y'all are gonna need to buckle up because this is <laughs> this is romantics <laughs> this, this, this is, is hardcore romantics this is this is deep yeah. we're going in we're this going is in right. question you know we know all right yeah, but as, as, as one should expect. Um, the question reads, in the spiritual realm, does there exist an ideal of tables? <laughs> Before I continue, I will elaborate. This refers to, you know, any, a, <laughs> any object. Mori just picks tables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Okay, this is not That's database so tables. This is not, there was confusion. Part oh really? Oh part. okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, an ideal of tables that is separate entity from the spirit webs of all extant tables. Uh, that is to say, if you get rid of all the tables, does the does the ideal of tables still exist? If so, did that ideal always exist even before the invention of tables, <laughs> or was it born out of the people? inventing tables i like this question this is a good question yeah. so in other words does the, right now in the cosmere there is no let's say there's no humans nuclear people. reactors in the oh. cosmere. no nuclear reactors does there exist the spiritual ideal of a nuclear reactor before that object is is even invented and made manifest okay so that's the question. Let's move on to the answer, uh, uh, which is no. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you just didn't say anything else. I wish you didn't tell me <laughs> anything else. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, this is where we diverge from Plato's theory of the forms. Again, theory of the forms was a conceptual benchmark for me. I thought the theory of the forms was awesome and it stuck in my head for many years and eventually gave birth to the, cosmi to, uh, to the cognitive, spiritual, and physical. The first book really delving into that being Dragonsteel Prime and it's in the opening chapters of that book. But where it differs is there is not a platonic ideal of a table in the Cosmere. All ideals in the Cosmere are filtered through the perception of sapient beings. Do, do you think we can call the Shardcast episode just the allegory of the cave and just hope that when people <laughs> Google this and be like, what is this? When they want some, you know, hard hitting Plato. Plato, Plato analysis. Yeah. It's good to know about the allegory of the cave. It's referenced all the time. No, yeah. it's, it, it is good. Sure. It is good. Everywhere. You yeah. should know about the, to think about seeing beyond the shadows on yeah. the wall of the cave. Yep. Brandon loves Maybe. his play, play doh his allegory of the cave, and ship of Theseus. That's, that's Maybe you should jam. turn turn around and walk out of the cave. Yep. Just <laughs> um, anyway. This is this is interesting to me. Uh, it's, to me, this is now very straightforward. Yes. That, like, but now that we have uh, a yes or no with a bit of an explanation on what that yes or no means, thank you for not just ending it. Uh, <laughs> no, because then we'll just no. argue about what the no means. Yes. <laughs> what true. does the no mean? Next question. <laughs> next question. Oh, wait, um, are we actually moving to next question? No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> okay, good. No. I was like, wait, I have thoughts here. No, no, no. That's fine. Yeah. No, you dork. It's because people invented tables that tables exist in the cognitive and spiritual realm. Great. That, yep. that yep. actually yep. totally tracks. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And it definitely shows the these realms are oriented around people like they didn't necessarily exist just 
by themselves. There's something about sapient beings. I don't, like this seems like a you know they have souls in this yeah, in this the miracle universe. Of life. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. There, there's something about having a mind and having a soul that like maybe created this realm, or at least they're Shifted. they're they're really connected. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 The spiritual Absolutely. realm is, and the cognitive realm are why they are because people exist. I think I could have seen this going either way. Like, this makes sense to me, but I also could have seen it just, like, always being there because the spiritual realm is supposed to be timeless, right? Like, it's supposed to just kind of be everything and every time all at once. So, like, I could definitely see there just being an ideal for everything, just sure. there in this weird yeah. whatever the hell the spiritual realm is. So, like, I, I could I could have seen it going either way. Well, it's interesting it, that, that there is like more of a focus on humans. It goes a little bit further than that, though. I, so I thought Evgeny's beings. Um, yes, yes. Sorry. I thought Evgeny's explanation was really good, but it's also not if I'm reading it, if I understand this right, it's not just nuclear reactors don't exist. And so there, and there's not a, an idea now. Right. It's also like even when nuclear reactors do exist, there will not be enter into the existence of the spiritual yeah. ideal of nuclear True. engines right True. so it's yeah. so it's it's not just when they exist it will come into being it's also it never exists there's never the spiritual ideal of a overarching concept itself so like the so here, here's an example mm. so say when like a gun is first invented the the spiritual ideal of a gun is filtered through like the, the types existing of things, guns that right? Exist. And so it, it's not like going to be like a mini gun, right? Like that that sort of thing, right? Yes. Like it's it's filtered in this specific way. So like you if you have a crappy wheel, like you're not the spiritual ideal isn't like the wheels and tires we have now or something. I don't know. Does that analogy make any sense? I don't know. <laughs> I I think of it. Well, I don't, I don't think of it, but like I am reminded of kind of a, a couple of wobs that we got a long time ago, kind of uh, around Warbreaker and the ideal of or or the idea of um, uh, returned coming back as mm -hmm. like the perfect visions of beauty, but that's the societal expectation mm -hmm. yes. um or or maybe their understanding of the societal expectation like there there is like yes. some group think going on into what it means to be beautiful and what it means to be a perfect specimen yes yeah it, it's uh, like what people think about perfection in relation to this person thing yeah right? like the yeah. concept it's not even like oh i find that attractive but it's your understanding of i realize that everyone around me has this sense of this is what is it this is yeah. what is attractive yeah even if i personally not i can my my brain comes up with an image that has not actually even related to my personal you know sense of 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 uh, an, an aesthetically yes. nice being but yeah definitely and and so i think uh, what's going on with the spiritual ideals is that it's more of a common denominator than it is, uh, you know, some idea of perfection. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, in the case of like guns or tables or nuclear reactors, it is what everyone who is aware of this concept, you like distill down the essence of what it means to be a table or a gun or a nuclear reactor. And that is the core of that it's the thing that all these things share yeah i remember mm. like talking with some people and they're like i have no idea what this question's asking or what this means and it's like i, I think we've had a great discussion on this question yeah. actually well, to, to I, me, I, mm, mm. My understanding of the spiritual realm is very like networky. I imagine like a spirit web is like this network of things yep, that sure, exist and bundled sure. together, taken as like a draw a line around it. This is a person, right? And they have connections to other, to different ideas and different things and different spirit webs. And to me, what this question says is that there's no like spirit web of all tables. There's not like yeah. a, this is the spirit of 
tables and like yes. all the table spirit webs that exist, you know, the, the, my desk does not have like a spirit web that's connected to all the idea of tables. It's instead just a network of all the tables together, sort of influenced by people are what tables are. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, sure. That's how sure. I interpret it. Sure. That's, that's an interesting interpretation. It is not how I think of it. And I, and I don't think I, I, in, in my head, you know, you go to the spiritual realm and you look at like, all of the tables in the physical realm, I think they all point to the same node that is, this is what a baseline table is. And all of you are like different interpretations and, and like different customizations of that, but there is a central core. And I'm trying to think of like soul casting and soul forging and these things. And I'm trying to like find an instance where uh, that th points to one or the other interpretation, but it's not coming to me readily. I, I think what I do simply because Brandon says, because the question is, does there exist an ideal of tables? And I think Brandon's no extends to that. Yeah. Because then at the end he says, there is not a platonic ideal of yeah. tables. I can see how you can read it differently. Yeah. But um, he also says even before the invention of tables or was it born out of people? So like, when you go this, this, or that. I think it gets into like, to me, it's an interesting, like, I don't know, it's more like a postmodern idea of like, how do you define what a table is? And the, there's yes. not like a, at an Alzium or what you didn't decide, like, this is what a table yeah, is. Right. It's more of a, right. um, I don't know. There's, there's some interesting philosophical yeah. collective yeah, discussions that can yes. happen in the Cosmere. On, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Ooh. Mm. Shannon. Right. Next one. It's, this is actually <gasps> very funny. I, I, I legitimately it? did not didn't do this on purpose. <laughs> no, I, I absolutely didn't do this reference on purpose. Uh, I totally forgot that this is a question in here. That's oh, funny. It's super funny. Let's do it. Uh, the reason it's funny, viewers, is because they know I am a Moash defender. I'm not a Moash stan, but I'm a defender. He deserves more. Let me go, Madness Lemon. Whose idea was it for Moash to wear a black Bridge Four uniform? Did Race come up with it as a way of taunting the Windrunners, or was Moash just feeling really dramatic that day? Brandon says that's Moash drama. Isaac will have to confirm this because I might get the story wrong. Concept art, I believe he put a Bridge Four patch that was twisted and upside down and made corrupted on his uniform, and I'm like, that's going a little far, even for Moash. He can order a black uniform, but so I think we took that off. It's just funny that I foreshadowed this earlier in the episode and we got to yeah. talk about the uniform. We uniforms. get to talk about it Perfect. now. Not even plan it. Oh, that's great. Like, I love that Isaac made art and it was too dramatic. <laughs> that's, that's too emo. That's too <laughs> edgy and twisted and corrupted and broken bridge force. It's too bad. Just, just the patch, just the bridge of four. Yeah. Patch. You know, maybe that would have been the void bridge four patch and we could have oh, gotten yeah, some void. Been, yeah. uh, details and so we, oh. brandon took that from us that, we need uh, an enlightened honor spren for sure oh that'd be see. so cool oh I my god see what, more enlightened spren yeah, yeah. i want to see what an what an enlightened honor spren looks like and what they act like yes and, yeah i need that like i i'm kind of over constant windrunner stuff but that sounds amazing <laughs> give me that <laughs> yeah let's twist the windrunner a little bit yeah. let's, let's let's see what that's Hell all about yeah. um i'm into that That would be nice that would be so cool that'd be so i would love that i think we have to get it eventually a, it would also give us a really nice way to like compare what a a proper order looks like versus what an enlightened version of yeah rendarin because we know so much of like the what the windrunners are now yes. the one the one yeah. order we have that for yeah. and, so and we know so, so little about truth watchers yeah. like right exactly truth watchers. yeah uh, very little uh, so we, we, i think this would just be such a cool opportunity this would be the best compare contrast yeah. oh it's what i want now i don't think i'm gonna get it but it's what i want oh i, I think we <laughs> gotta get enlightened variants of all the spren yeah i think we have yeah. to this has nothing yeah. to do with the question. It's it's much more interesting than this question. The, <laughs> the question's funny, but uh, I I I want you know what would like an enlightened heist friend be like? Like that would just be, it would not be helpful for comparing and contrasting at all. 
Uh, but like that would be that'd be weird. I am I'm really excited to see the visuals for all of these because yeah. one of my one of my favorite things about Roshar and honestly the Cosmere in general are Spren. Yeah, I think they are they're really cool like little spirit creatures, and I think a lot of them have really interesting design elements to them, like the idea that Ash Spren, uh, like yeah, their Ash their cool. their flesh is really just. You know, I don't know if it's ash, but like they can blow it away like ash. And yes. when they move, their skin constantly disintegrates and reforms. And like their form of a rude gesture is them gesturing like they're blowing off their flesh. Um, all of these cool things so, like, are really cool. Yeah. And so I want yeah. like you throw in the the corruption slash enlightenment from Xiaonat. You double the number of cool things you have going on. We're just like, yes, please give me. I think Roshar needs more magical powers, really. Like if I, th- <laughs> I, th- I think I think he doesn't have enough. No, I, I, I want all the enlightened ones. Maybe those are void binders. Maybe not. Let's get the void binders in here, too. Yeah, I don't let's, know. Let's we'll find out people. People forming the hell bonds with Void Spren, like the higher order, like like mm. Yixli and mm. and Yulim. Sure, thirty magic systems is not enough. Let's yeah. go for like Void Spren, criminally underused. True, true. I want more specific Void Spren variants. Yep, this keeps being more and more introduced, and I'm like, but when will we cover all of the basic Knights Radiant? <laughs> you know, just, just, we just, don't even have all the friends. Establish. Yeah. Just tell us the basics. We need we need to actually Before see more main character directions. Maybe we, maybe yes. we'll right. see, you know, like that Dustbringer book, you know, I need, eventually maybe. I was maybe. thinking of Ash Spren main yeah. character. Yeah, no, that would be that be cool. That would be cool. Oh, uh, that would be awesome. Why is it Ash for the Dustbringer book? I don't get it. Anyway, <laughs> she needs an Ash Spren. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's why. Maybe yeah. maybe an enlightened Ash Bren. Oh, that'd be interesting. Hey, Speak. you guys think about how they 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 know who Jaanat is. They've probably spoken with her before. They've probably. It's not just yeah, she's probably. not just like a weird figure to them. She's like they actually if they if they know that they have a corrupted Spren in front of them, they're like they actually kind of know what that means way more than anyone yeah. here does. Yeah, neat. like the heralds probably They're remember before and after the unmade existing, right? Surely. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, Ja, not. I don't know about her. She's like, she's so new on the scene. <laughs> <laughs> what could she do? Speaking of people who are interested in Sprint, um, a questioner hey. asks, does Axes the Collector have a torment? And Brandon says, the curse of kind is slightly different, uh, but a, a now analogous to a torment from a dawn shard he did not hold a dawn shard but something similar is happening what does that even mean <laughs> so soul stuff so damage yeah. so changing so corruption whatever what um, okay so it, so mm-hmm. let's, let's back up because so axis the collector is the the blue guy hunting spran yes a torment is the thing that um that nomad and some that man the dawn shard has warped his soul and and, and caused some kind of damage that yes makes him unable to commit violent acts and um, some other things. And then the curse of kind is the thing that allows Axes the collector to sort of vaguely see into Shadesmar. No, I don't um, think he can do that. Is that uh, related? No, it was like, like a misfortune thing. It's, it's yeah. makes uh, the shadow go the wrong direction. Yes. And, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, should, I should say it, it brings him closer to to Shadesmar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's true. That's true. Because like the backwards um, shadows and stuff. But so interestingly, that is similar to what happens with Yasna when she first encounters Ivory in in her prologue. So it is, has a torment also. Uh, well, or curse of kind. <laughs> uh, but it is different from just like regular singer behavior, who are also closer to the cognitive yeah. realm but in a different way or maybe they're not close enough yeah, right uh, but as far as we know i don't i don't know if that's explicitly mentioned anywhere but i don't think we know that axes sees kind of yeah. the true version of spren in the way that singers do yeah, uh, and so yeah it's, i don't think it, that's clear you're right probably you know some cognitive stuff going on but probably not the same cognitive stuff as what we see in other places we have one wob on the curse of kind yep. uh, which was from... unsolicited if i recall correctly yes yes because it's one about like 
who Brandon would want to like hang out with? Would you would you want to just like follow around axes? Uh, and he's like, oh no, he has good, 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 good he, he said, but bad luck follows him because of the curse of kind. So maybe not. Maybe I wouldn't want to be around Axes the Collector. He's channeling the wrong kind of fortune. And then he says, this is very funny. Channeling is not an actual term. Don't take that and put it on the wiki. <laughs> Just very funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the fortune stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the curse of kind exists and that's 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 what what it is and so i guess there's some spiritual damage i i it was never clear to me whether all dissian amians had this and so this wob somewhat indicates to me that the answer is no and that there's weird stuff with axes in particular here you mean sia amians sia amians yes Okay. Yes. I, yes. I don't think the Dissians have it. It's it's so weird that we had Sia and Dissian, but then we just Dissian are sleepless, and so I. Why why, it's why such did a we cool do that? Word too. But yeah. It's just sleepless. Okay. No, I I like sleepless. I think I think sleepless is great. I think it's just too much like sure. Dyson, so I'm fine. Yeah, um, yeah. The vacuum yeah, d- brand. Yes, Dissian. You know, it'd be great to see Amians, <laughs> just just Amians, just <laughs> regular okay. Amians. Yeah, were were they the ones with the like Egyptian rod beards that we saw in Don Shard? Oh, or was the that human Amians. Yes, yes, yeah. that's true. Yes, yeah. human Amians. N- not to be confused with the two other species of Amians. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Rushar, okay. truly a terrible place for names. <laughs> everything's a spread everything's an avian all right great everything's roshar everything's roshar <laughs> any spren mm-hmm. who transformed into a soul caster in amia he's really an amia <laughs> yeah yeah um anyway uh i i think there has to be some weird spiritual damage uh i have no idea what that could be referring to at all in any way Yep, I was going to debate that it doesn't have to be damage. Um, sure, it could just sure, be sure. like the soul being, you know, changed in some way. Sure. Though yep. the fact that it is a curse kind of <laughs> it, it is very similar to like what the torment is in that sense, right? So it does feel and that the naming both seems consistent with like a thing you didn't want that was kind of placed on you. At, at at some point i think we also need to talk about like the other half of the curse of kind, which is kind. Yeah, what 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 is that you know something for all amians because they're you know uh the same kind is it you know somehow related to kindness but i don't have coherent thought on that kind is a person that yeah (laughs) the curse curse of of kind (laughs) well no he he did (laughs) pronounce it as curse of kind he's not Mm. it's curse of kind that's one of those like specific facts that was referenced once in way of kings and brandon's yeah. just like oh yeah the curse of kind yeah 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 so like maybe he remembers what happened with the night street king <laughs> you know maybe <laughs> it's it's the curse of kai ein and he, Ka- and he's just pronouncing it wrong guys Ka- 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 true he did it uh, he's a shard now my good okay uh Sorry. yeah i don't he didn't hold a dawn shard. Something else happened. Similar. I don't know what that could mean, though. So, yep, yeah, some kind of spiritual stuff. I, th- I think that has to be back half stuff, right? Like, like Amia stuff. It, it's going to be back half, probably. I mean, at this point, we only have one more book in the front half, so <laughs> yeah, a lot of things are going to be back half. Yeah, he didn't yeah. say he didn't say when to truth and find out on this one. So. No, that's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. What a foe. What a foe. Cool. So Ryan Graham asks, I'd love to ask if Mare at the Pits was a Kantra. And Brandon says, I did not intend Mare to be a Kantra. And I'm glad that he he just said just like phrased it in general because not ever at all. It, this is this is like Super old timey, like 2006, 2008, Mistborn Era One type. Yeah. Like maybe what what's going on with Mare? It's a little weird there, right? Didn't rapo that, but bloody tan and stuff. <laughs> That's a dog. It's a dog. Possibly a chondra. 
possibly a chondra. But mayor, not a chondra. Not, not mayor. Possible. Nope. Yeah. Not intended to be a chondra, but yeah. Well, Brandon, but no. <laughs> you have to answer it a bunch of different ways. No, she isn't. I didn't intend her to be one. <laughs> she was never a chondra, um, and never you will know, be in the future. From at any point in the timeline, <laughs> <laughs> you can't promise that. Maybe Mare's bones are round, and maybe, maybe that, oh, maybe that'll yeah. really torment who's, who's, uh, Kelsier. Capital yeah, T. In era three, <laughs> who's who's to say who is who's mayor and who's not mayor? Is is a chondra wearing mayor's bones? Mayor and ship of Theseus, mayor. <laughs> the spiritual ideal of mayor. I'm sorry, spiritual ideal. Next question. All right, uh, <laughs> let's get out of here. And I think this will be our last one because we finished the cycle. And oh, what what's 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 happening here? Uh, so oh. we have Lefish saying, "Add Dragon Steel this year." You confirmed that Nightblood is not a Dawn Shard. True. However, its abilities seem to be far greater than that of Vivenna's Blade, presumably made with the same method. Well, I think there's some differences. Anyway, this disparity may be due to the person who originally awakened the swords and leads one to believe that Nightblood, despite not being the Dawn Shard, had a Dawn Shard involved in its creation. Therefore, is Shashara, the person who awakened Nightblood, a Dawn Shard? Brandon. Oh, good. Great. Excellent questions. You've got one faulty premise. Vivenna's sword was intentionally designed differently to not get another Nightblood. That was exactly what I was thinking, Brandon. So let's keep that in mind. That said, I don't know that they could make another Nightblood if they wanted to. She definitely did not want to, and there's a different process that they use nowadays for safer swords. Uh, is Vivenna's sword better or worse than Nightblood? Brandon, depends what you want from the sword. Vivenna's sword does not automatically suck the soul and investiture out of anything it touches, <laughs> disintegrating that which it touches, which is both a plus and a minus. Yeah, I think it's very generous to say that's both a plus and a minus. I mean, if you want to kill a vessel that like night yeah. blood, yeah, that's like wait, if, if you, you want, want a super to weapon, lots of murder. You want a super weapon? Uh, uh I like how we just totally glossed over like is Shashara a Dawn shard? So maybe 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 let's ask. Right <laughs> past that. Just like yeah. I don't want to talk right. about that. Managed to slide right around that question, didn't he? That's that's why you don't give him any openings. <laughs> it, it does make me wonder. Let's say hypothetically, Nightblood is used on Rissen. Okay, who has a Dawn Shard? Okay, what happens to the Dawn Shard? You know, that's an interesting question, right? I mean, as Brandon said, if Dawn Shards are more or less investiture than a shard, like, do we know? Do we know? It's not that? like raw investiture. Like, it's kind of different, right? I I do think they are tremendously invested, though. They are, they are very invested because Rissen sort of ex like has that color sense type thing. And, and I, I think Sunlit yeah. Man also also says that it's it's like a, a vast pool yeah. of power. Or but it's it a is. different sort of thing than vaporizing your body and ascending the goblet. Yes. It's, it's, yes. it's different. It is interesting though that like when Sigzel needed his dawn needed to protect himself or whatever, the, the Dawn Shard burned up Ox to protect itself. Yeah. Which to me kind of I think implies that it couldn't have like it didn't have like its own pool of investiture to tap on to defend itself well they they are they're commands right right which you know we don't fully understand but i don't think like shards are they they have an inherent intent but i think they also have uh, uh, like a, a large pool of power. And so I think a shard may be able to defend itself with itself. A yeah. dawn shard is b because it's a command it, it can't like command itself to defend itself, if that makes sense. Like 
the Dome Shard itself is a super user access or an admin access to any system out there. But you need that system. You need something that is able to perform whatever operations you want to perform in order for those operations to happen, if that makes uh, a little bit more sense. I think the Dawn Shard is very highly invested. It's just the investiture is crafted into this very specific way. Yeah. And so, like, Shard power, it's a big pool of power colored with this intent, but it like it's it's not like wrapped up in a specific way you can use it to do stuff whereas the dawn shard it's like a crafted weapon kind of kind of kind of like how nightblood here like that investiture is crafted in this very specific way nightblood can't like he's very invested Mm -hmm. but he can't like necessarily use the investiture that he was made with to like do other things. He needs to absorb it from somewhere else. That actually kind of makes you, sense. You need to with night, like Nightblood can't do generic and general things. You have to stab someone with Nightblood for Nightblood to do its thing. Yeah. So I, I think it's it's just like how it's created. And so like the Dawn Shards are clearly fantastically powerful. Uh, how invested they truly are is is a bit unclear to me. Uh, but I do it it does make me think that Nightblood stabbing Risen back to kind of the, the premise yes. of how that's yes. started. Thank you. That I feel like Nightblood could like eat the dawn shard could do damage to the dawn shard um i I, I say it depends on how invested it is right because nightblood got seemingly pretty full off of a vessel yeah that's true Mm -hmm. uh which you know a vessel is more than a regular person's soul but it's far less than a shard and so he can also eat like how many breath like a lot. Nightblood can eat a lot of investiture. Uh, I, maybe Dawn Shards are just orders of magnitude more. Maybe um, but... maybe what happened is that, you know, you, you said Risen, why not say Sigzel? Maybe that's what happened. <laughs> Yikes. I think we would Yikes. see some effects on Sigzel, perhaps, uh, of, of the Dawn Shard, but... The uh, Dawn Shard protected itself. I don't yeah, know. He yeah. had a, he had a, he had a, we know he had a giant big burst of investiture. If it was a successful, like, batting Nightblood down? Yeah, like, I, I guess I'm wondering, like, I think the thing with Rissen is that she doesn't have access to other sources of investiture. And that, that was, mm. right? So it's like, can the Dawn Shard protect itself no even? Yeah. yeah. Like, because Shashara even, like, the, the Dawn Shard could just immediately eat her divine breath, right? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm cool with that. I think that's exactly what would happen. Right, and, and then, then she likely had even more on top of that. Oh yeah, yeah, she yeah. must have. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, I mean, clearly she used Nightblood in combat and murdered a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah, that's, right. Like that's she true. did do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, so anyway, this this is a really this is this is an interesting one. But uh, anyway, someone should ask uh, Brandon. Just is. Was Shashara a Don stuff. Shard? Just like forget you know, just all that other that. stuff <laughs> yeah. up until therefore. Don't even include the therefore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah this yeah. does like imply that Vivina could have made something like Nightblood, right? Right? Like you don't uh, uh, whether or not she was a Don Shard, it, to me it implies that that she could have, because otherwise, why would she have to intentionally design it not to be that way? But uh uh Brandon also says um they don't know that they could make another nightblood even if they wanted yes. to okay yeah. so like yeah. i don't know what defenses or like changes in visualization let's say that they're doing to prevent nightblood things but yeah i mean this this s- smells of you know some kind of intervention you know i don't know if like edgely yeah. changed awakening to make this impossible. I don't know if this is referring to uh, 
uh, you needed a Dawn Shard to create a Night Blood, and that Dawn Shard either no longer exists or is somewhere else. Um, I just don't think you could. Dis- I don't think Night Blood could destroy a Dawn Shard. Like that. That well, feels like that, that like shouldn't be others. allowed, right? Even if Shashara was a, a Dawn Shard, yeah, you know, maybe maybe you can maybe you can damage it beyond like to to the point where it is like it still functions, but it doesn't function well enough to create another Night Blood. Like, wouldn't it be more likely that Night Blood is the Dawn Shard? I don't know. That's a question. But we know Night Blood's not a Dawn Shard. So. Oh, okay. Well then. Yeah, that, that, that was the thing from Dragon Was that a Wob? Yeah, that, that's, oh. that's the thing at the top of this question that Brandon did say. It's not a Dawn Shard. Oh, okay. It's not a Dawn Shard because it ate up the entire Dawn Shard. I mean, that's, that's possible. Itself. That's possible. That's interesting. How are you going to reform an Alcyon with just three Dawn Shards? Come on. You don't need the destruction. You don't need Dawn Shards? I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be a, a happy hippie Aiden Elysium. Yeah, I think you need all the shards to give context to all that. Yeah, I don't think you can be missing stuff. No, you don't need Odium. Just Odium, get him out of there. Destruction, don't shard, get it out of there. We'll make a new and better god. Uh, I feel it's like that Jack. might lead to some problems, maybe. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't need hate. <laughs> Anyway, uh, cool. We got to page. Oh, hey, we're, we're on page 33. You're welcome. We can finish this in two more episodes. We can definitely. So get, get some more wobs at uh, C2E2, uh, Evgeny. So we, we got we got <laughs> stuff to do. So uh, we actually yeah. can fill two more episodes. Yeah, yeah. No, we are, yeah. No, we, we've been doing a steady seven pages per episode, and we have 13, 14 pages left. So yeah. The math checks out. It was all planned from the beginning with the Dawn Shards. Uh, so let's head on over to who's that Cosmere character. This character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia Tong. Mraze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for who's that? Cosmere character. Call. Welcome to Who's That Cosmere Character, the game show where you send five clues and a character to WTCC at 17chart.com. I read each clue aloud, and these guys have a chance to guess who's that Cosmere character. Um, before recording, I forgot to ask Ben a grace for regular ones. So we're doing more Herald priority queue things, which we're still kind of behind on. So we, we, we are beholden to our $10 a month patrons on Patreon. Yep. So I think that's fine here. They are our shareholders. Yes. And- yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we do quarterly earning calls with our patrons. Let's not talk about quarterly rewards that we need to give to patrons that we totally do. Um, Okay. So this (laughs) quarterly Q and A's, right? Uh, Yeah. Uh, So this one is sent by softy to lofty, which is too lofty. I like that. Too lofty. And clue one. This character is fairly invested. Not really invested. <laughs> it's fair. It's kind, of, <laughs> kind of mid. I'm like, kind of invested. Is this like a fairy pun? Is it fair of hair pun? No. Invested, no. Kaladin. It is not Kaladin. Fair. You said that you started so bright, like a bright tone, and I'm like, oh, she- it's Kaladin. Oh, did I? Oh, no, <laughs> Eric. Eric started. Oh, they, they did. It is not Kaladin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally was just reading the clues. I'm like, I don't remember what I said, how I said it. Uh, Eshenai. It is not Eshenai. Uh, Sill. Uh, it is not Sill. They, they do specify that fairly invested just means middle of the road. So that's exactly okay. what you said. Okay. So, um, that would then be a character whose name exists. They have a name. And that name 
There you go. Three three of us have gone. Yep. He is. Yep. Yep. Had that episode. The revealed in the book. Pro- pro- I mean, the it is in the books. In. Yeah, for sure. Uh, in the and it is revealed to be Dent. It is death, actually. Yes. <laughs> yes. I can't believe it. Get yes. Man, this is going to be such a fun one, you <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Sorry, Softy, wow. too lofty. Uh, I, I, th- I thought loud. this one was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> you know, after... <laughs> You're so red right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, they, they also said fairly invested just means middle of the road. Somewhere between a shard and an AVR. I'm like, that's super helpful. That's, that's a very okay. wide middle of the road. <laughs> the road's really like, wide here. Fairly? Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Man... What are the rest of the clues? Because they're, they're yeah, good. Well, clue clue two is this character is cynical of their gods. Clue uh-huh. three: this character is often in the presence of royalty in their books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a clever yep. clue. That's good. Clue four: this character was integral to a coup. And clue five: this character is a master swordsman. Nice. nice. That's probably a good set of clues. Maybe. It's a really good side of clothes. Probably. Too bad. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> it's not good from here. <laughs> nice. Very good. Um, cool. Well, you know, that it speeds up on editing. So I guess I guess I'll take <laughs> that. I just have to put one clue on screen. So, you know, that's fine. This next one is also from our Heralds on Patreon. This one is from Emma TR. And clue one. This character is deeply religious. Says it. E- Evie. It, it is not says it and it's not Evie. Hmm. Kadash. It's not Kadash. Ooh. Ooh. All sorts of fun guesses. Yes. Demu. Not Demu. Clue two. This character's irritable. Galadon? It's not Galadon. He was religious, I think. Yeah, Irritable. yeah. He, he, he was. Yeah, he was. He, he was all he, about he like, like. I don't like the just scary mysteries and. Was, yeah, like, he like told off road at one point yeah. for mixing them Is up. It... Yeah. No, that's not it. I'm gonna go with Teft. It's not Teft. Hmm. Wouldn't call no, him is... deeply religious, but I, he, I, swears I by, he swears <laughs> by. He swears by collects breath. He all swears the time. by yeah. Well, I mean, that could be anyone. <laughs> it, no, I think you're right. I think I think he does like. De- get defensive about Boranism sometimes just because he was also raised in a cult so yeah you know as he do what's up with the envisagers guys remember remember how in rhythm of war we got a little bit more envisager lore it's like oh okay that was wait what <laughs> i was very surprised yeah. yeah was the first clue deeply religious deeply, deeply religious, religious that's right yeah. is it the name of light song's brother <laughs> Uh, it is not. It is not like Song's brother. Can Good you tell me his name so I can write it down? Larimar. Uh, Larimar. Hey. Yeah. Or Lalalamar. I don't know. The double L- consonants Lalar. are weird. <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, that's 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 how the audiobooks do it. Actually, that, 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 I, I appreciate actually, that. It, it, Precisely. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, let me guess. How they in. Asteris. It's not Steris. Clue three. <laughs> this is very funny considering the last one. This character is not more invested than a typical person. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah. <sighs> to be fair, that narrows it down more than the fairly invested one, I feel like. I just have a sense this is a book I haven't read in a very long time. So mm. now I'm like, oh, trying to think back to old school Cosmere books. I'm going to go with Bluefingers. It's not Bluefingers. That, that was what my next guess, Ooh, but I was like... Nice. Eh. Well, Again, he didn't anonymously saved time. you. Yeah. Anonymously saved me. No, I only nailed Dent. <laughs> okay. I mean, whatever you're into. Like, 
whatever you want. Yeah. You don't judge him. That, that's Not, that's a fun guy. You know, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. He has he a be. rich mercenary humor. Yes. Is not more invested than a typical person. Yeah. And also, is it clubs? Not clubs. Um, I don't think he's irritable, but I don't have a better guess right now. Rock. It's not rock. Gets very annoyed when you mess with the stew. That's true. That's stew. <laughs> he bonks you on the head with a ladle. Renette. It's not Renette. Clue four. This character accidentally saved a protagonist's life. Accidentally. Yes. This is when we're all going to feel dumb about. Yeah, the, the problem is that this clue is extremely specific. Yes. And that makes it but very in, hard uh, to use that kind of yeah. character. <laughs> oh, no. I thought of a funny one, but it doesn't fit a few things. Okay. I'll guess it, because I, I think Let's this is it. a book I, I haven't read. Stormfather. <laughs> it's not the Stormfather. <laughs> I like that, though. That's pretty funny. He's, he's very irritable. I, I do think he might be more invested than a typical person. <laughs> Oh, I'm that was the one that didn't fit, but I'm like, <laughs> I think if he ever did anything for Kaladin, it was by accident. Yeah, that's um, that's true. And and you know what? I I approve of ignoring clues when this is all you can think of. I I, I yeah. support you in that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's not Sil. Okay. Six. It's not really irritable. But... It's not six of the dusk. Dang it! He goes by dusk, not sixth. Wow. Well, in early drafts, actually. Yeah. Well, but those are unpublished, actually. <laughs> somewhere, Posted those somewhere, I think. I am gonna go. I think I think I think Dusk fits all those clues. <laughs> I was really happy with that. Well, not Shoot. clue five though. <laughs> uh, I, I think a lot you of don't us know. Are thinking along similar lines. So I'm gonna go with Wendell. It's not Wendell. Clue. Five. This character's romantic partner died recently. In like the story that we see this character. Mm. The, they're sorry, which partner? Say that again. The this character's partner? romantic partner died recently. So that's probably not the secret project. Jules? It is Jules. Hey, hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, ah. for it, so they they have an explanation for clue four. She saved Vivenna by accidentally letting her hear Claude's lifeless command phrase, yeah. which she used to escape Dent's crew. Yep. Was it like no Red, Red Panther was light songs? Yeah. I was thinking of the other three clues. I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. In that moment, yeah, nice. irritable religious Claude's yeah. and, and like had a romantic partner who died. Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah, because that that was Are fairly she... recent. Not that it ever stopped her. It it, it is that canonical that that did not stop her. That is true. That's a that's a fun Warbreaker like, annotations fact. I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, fun. Yay. Jules heard the whole "till death do you part" and just ignored it completely. He was only mostly dead. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's more yeah. conscious than you give the lifeless credit for. Anyway, we should probably move on from that. <laughs> uh, good Next job getting that one. jewels. <laughs> God. <laughs> all right. Uh, you can find us on 17shower.com for all your news, discussion, theories, and fun that you could ever want. We have a very hopping Discord server. I don't know why I always say hopping Discord server. It doesn't make it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't matter. It's hopping, man. That's, that's, there are that's people, people there, really and you can chat there as well. Um, and I, I like that. Um, we have a Patreon. You can support for as little as a dollar a month. And if you're a Herald, you can support submit uh who's that cosmic character priority ones which i will definitely read sooner than the apparently spam filled regular who's that cosmic character queue <laughs> apparently it's 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 getting to be a little problematic um so yeah that's yeah that's that's why people don't put their emails in like youtube video descriptions <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's honestly kind of incredible that it took what 
seven years for it to actually be a problem. Like legitimately Jeff like is bad. It still would have been a problem in 2017, 2018, surely. Yeah. Like bad idea. Anyway. Yeah. You can support us on Patreon. Uh we we vote on cool art. We make cool art. Or rather, we commission cool art. We didn't make it. <laughs> yeah. No. None of us can. No, absolutely uh, not. But we can pay people who do. We can pay people who do. Uh, and of course, you can find us on all the, the, the social places uh, and stuff. And so, uh, yeah, so we will see you all next time for probably more WOBs because that's that's where that's that's where we're at here. It's the name of the game for this year. I'm cool with that. I, I really like not needing to outline what we're about to do. <laughs> I, I actually really enjoy that. Uh, not that I put that much effort into my outlines before the before we do them. It's that's like team effort. That's like a midnight the night before we record where I'm like, ah, oh, okay, I made a thing. Great, cool. And anyway, we'll see you all next time. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.